The Chicago White Sox had an off day on Monday and are beginning a three-game series against the Kansas City Royals tonight on the south side. Lucas Giolito battles the Royals as the White Sox try to get something, anything going in the right direction. There is still lingering hope, but with 34 games left, time is running out. How did we get here and what can be done moving forward? You are Locked On White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search Locked On White Sox. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk White Sox. Locked on White Sox is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The White Sox have 17 more home games. Hopefully they can start showing the fans some fire and passion. Organizational changes are needed, but will it actually happen? And after 128 games, the White Sox have put forth a dismal product with very slim chances of seeing the postseason during their World Series window. State of our Chicago White Sox, boy, 63 and 65, uh, still five games back in the AL Central, chasing the Cleveland Guardians uh, with 34 games. Left uh, tonight, the White Sox begin a three game series against the Kansas City Royals here on the south side. Uh, the Sox have not fared well uh, against the Royals uh, this year. Uh, during this easy part of the schedule, uh, post all star break, the White Sox 17 and 19. Uh, never did I think I'd be doing this type of episode uh, this late in the season here in 2022, uh, this championship window, uh, World Series contenders, and here we are uh, before Labor Day having to talk about the slim chances of postseason play for our defending AL Central champs, Chicago White Sox. Uh, two games under 500. It is August 30th. Who would have thought that? Uh, this, of course, is that championship window, a competitive year. It was supposed to look so much different. Uh, the Sox looking to win back-to-back -back AL Central championships for the first time in franchise history. And we all thought it, huh? At the beginning of this year, uh, it might be a little bit more difficult. It might be challenging. Maybe they're not going to win the division by double digits, uh, but the Sox definitely have the talent. They have the pitching. Uh, the core is there. Uh, they should win this division without a real issue. And look at where we are. Uh, just all of us shaking our heads. Uh, it was kind of refreshing, was it not? Uh, on Monday to not have to watch White Sox baseball, take a break, do something else as the summer winds down. Uh, so settling at winning the division, though, of course, was not the goal. Uh, finally winning a playoff series for the first time in 17 years, still, that was not the goal this year. Winning a World Series was the realistic goal at the beginning of this season. Uh, fans talked about it, but also, uh, you know, folks that are in the know amongst baseball uh, had the Sox, you know, winning the AL pennant, even winning the World Series. Uh, and it's still shocking uh, where we are at right now. So with 34 games left to play, uh, there is a realistic possibility 
that the Chicago White Sox will not even make the playoffs. Uh, the numbers are out from fan graphs. Uh, some of these are single digit uh, numbers, uh, AL Central, wild card. Uh, it, it's troubling. Uh, players uh, just they just can't stay healthy, and the ones that do just haven't produced. Others like Yasmani Grandal are simply washed up, in my opinion. Uh, I, I honestly think what we've been getting from Sebi Zavala is more than enough, uh, and he's getting on base, he's hitting from some power. Uh, I don't think we're going to get much from Yasmani Grandal moving forward. Uh, we could talk, and we will during the offseason, about the lack of production from guys. And you'll hear it from Rick Hahn, I'm sure, uh, in November or you know maybe right after the season ends, whenever he decides to start talking in the offseason. You'll hear about his disappointment that players just didn't live up to the back of their baseball card. Uh, well, we've had players on this team that have stayed healthy. And they just haven't performed uh, as a competitive team. Uh, and there hasn't been a lot of accountability. There's been a lack of fundamentals. No urgency. Outplayed and outmanaged by seemingly lesser teams. It's not necessarily that you know these teams, this is easy part of the schedule and post-All-Star break, that these teams that we played were all of a sudden Great. You know, every now and then teams get hot, like the Orioles are playing, I think, with house money. But I just feel like the Sox have been beating themselves. They have not been playing up to competition. And it has showed. Uh, Kelly, Graveman, Harrison, McGuire, Garcia, Pollock. Those were your big offseason acquisitions uh, this past year. So when you start thinking, uh, as we will do, uh, as this season starts tumbling down uh, and into the off season, October and November, how did it go all wrong? Well, it really started uh, last year. A lack of movement before the lockout. Uh, Rick Hahn wanting the market to be different. Okay, waiting for the market to make sense for the White Sox instead of setting things uh, themselves, being proactive instead of reactive. So the Sox were left with a Kendall Graveman, uh, an injured Joe Kelly, a uh, Josh Harrison playing second base, Reese McGuire, who's no longer on the White Sox, re-signing utility guy Lurie Garcia, and then at the last second trading Craig Kimbrell for an injured A.J. Pollock. Then, of course, you add Johnny Cueto, which is one of the highlights, actually, of this season. Elvis Andrews, after the Oakland Athletics DFA'd him, and Jake Diekman at the deadline. The only acquisition at the deadline because, of course, uh, Rick Hahn felt like maybe uh, teams were asking too much for some of the White Sox talent in exchange for a deal. When I think maybe... Maybe Rick Hahn in the front office think too highly of some of these players on the White Sox. Uh, and, you know, a deal uh, could have been done to shake things up. Uh, there is a log jam on this White Sox team of first baseman, DH, outfielders. Something has got to give this offseason. Jose Abreu, this is his last year uh, under contract with the White Sox. There's much to be talked about with what should the White Sox do. Uh, Jose Abreu, one of my uh, favorite players. Uh, I mean, he'll go down in history as an all-time favorite. Uh, I believe his jersey should be retired. There should be a statue uh, for him. Uh, but you know what? I, I think if you're to bring Jose Abreu back, uh, you need to tell him you're taking the Pauli Canerco treatment. You are becoming the DH. Andrew Vaughn is our future at first base, and that is how it's going to go. I think Abreu feels he still has several years left to play, but we need to stop having an excess of guys that can play DH and first base, and we can even force them out to the outfield, which is ridiculous. Andrew Vaughn should be your first baseman in 2023. What are you going to do with Gavin Sheets? He is not a right fielder. He has power. What are you going to do about that? 
Do you have space on this roster realistically to retain Sheets? How about Grandal? I, you know, he's making money and there's no way he's going to walk away from it. But what value does he really still have as a catcher having multiple knee issues for back to back seasons? Socks need to pick a lane. I'm worried that they're not going to, but they absolutely have to to maximize this championship window of theirs. There's been a lot of talk recently about being angry, not frustrated, but I'm going to tell you why talk has been cheap on the South side. More on that in a moment. As you gear up for fall, you need to find the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Moving forward, what do the White Sox need to do? Here's the reality. The White Sox have lost nine of their last 11 Uh, having a losing record at home, Uh, and again, only 17 more games on the south side. It'd be nice to see some fight and some fire for the hometown fans. Uh, Josh Harrison was recently asked about uh, his thoughts on the Sox losing nine of their last 11 games, and this is what Harrison had to say. You've got to ride the wave, ebbs and flows. But at the same time, you've got to acknowledge where you are and be realistic and know that we had a chance to win some of these games. Fell short, but if that doesn't light a fire under somebody, they've got to look in the mirror. I don't think it's a thing where me or anybody else has to light a fire under anybody. Uh, Interesting words there from Harrison. Really, uh, you can pick this apart, but the word realistic, I think he's hitting it hey, with 34 games left and you are five back in the AL Central, uh, what's the reality here? And and I like his talk about lighting a fire. I mean, things have been said by Johnny Cueto and Jose Abreu, and I think they've been spot on about some fire and swagger uh, with this team. But if you can't uh, get amped up on your own to finish this season strong, that you see a sliver of hope. There is still hope. If you can't do it on your own, then, then something's wrong. This is uh, Tony La Russa on the state of the White Sox. I don't like frustration. Discouragement just seeps energy out of your body. I just get angry and want to do something about it. I'd like to see uh, this team do something about it. I think we all would. We've been waiting for it. A lot of talk. Folks saying the right things, You know, choosing their words very carefully. Uh, but I'd like to see some fire. I'd like to see this anger that Tony La Russa speaks about. I'd like to see that manifested into some wins, some consistent uh, quality play from our White Sox. Uh, here's Jose Abreu on if this team can turn things around. If we truly believe we can do it, then we'll do it. It's just a matter for us to believe it. It's baseball. We've been dealing with a lot of injuries and other stuff, but that's baseball. We just have to believe that we're able to do that, that we're able to get into that really good stretch and compete. But we have to believe in that. We have to believe in ourselves. We have to keep grinding 
and keep finding ways to try to win games and do it on a consistent basis. Hey, I believe that as Abreu uh, just highlighted, uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think that there is something about believing in yourself. But then going back to Josh Harrison's point about the reality of it, is there enough time? Is there enough time to get going on a consistent basis and catch fire, you know, and win seven out of 10 while also maybe getting some help from Cleveland? I don't know. I have not seen it from this White Sox team in this past weekend against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Unfortunately, it was the low of lows. Uh, I, I need to see it. Talk is cheap. We need to see action. Uh, there are three with Kansas City this week and then three with Minnesota. And then it's on the road in Seattle and Oakland. Uh, the Sox traditionally do not play well on the West Coast. Cleveland has Baltimore and Seattle this week. There needs to be a sense of urgency from this White Sox team. There needs to be a better brand of baseball immediately. Better lineup configurations, better fundamentals, better coaching. And even if all those things actually happen and can be sustained at a high level, honestly, I don't think it's possible to overtake the AL Central. Tony, Tony La Russa is saying that he doesn't get frustrated or discouraged. Instead, he gets angry and wants to do something about it. What are you going to do? Actually hold people accountable? Stop making constant excuses for everybody from McEwing to Giolito to Robert. Get this team to play as a team with one unified purpose to say you're not going to get upset, but instead angry and you're going to do something about it. Sure sounds wonderful, but we are looking for results, demanding them. You know, it's not too early to start thinking about 2023. I'm going to tell you why major changes are needed if the Sox are going to maximize their competitive window. More on that in a moment. We are reminded all the time while watching the White Sox recently that the 2023 schedule is out and we should start making our plans and look at ticket packages and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk a little, you know, off season and beyond. Uh, this is going to definitely be a theme uh, throughout the rest of this season and into October and November. Changes need to occur with this White Sox organization. And the biggest issue, in my opinion, is ownership. Uh, I don't think that will happen uh, immediately. But what are some other changes that can still produce results? La Russa has to go along with McEwing, Menachino, maybe even Daryl Boston. Ideally, I'd like to see Rick Hahn gone as well. Uh, but if he stays, he needs to be given the opportunity to make some outside hires. No more repackaging former White Sox players or front office personnel into different roles. The A.J. Pruszynski for manager idea, uh, it gives me all kinds of Robin Ventura vibes. Uh, he's a fan favorite, no doubt. And that is uh, much, uh, he's much more vocal, sure, than Ventura but is not managed or coached at the MLB level. And it's highly doubtful that the fan base will revolt if the team continues to flounder. I get that. But don't be lazy, White Sox. They need to find an actual uh, manager. Have an actual managerial search for the first time in a long time. Now, who knows uh, what will happen with the ownership? I, I've, I want Jerry Reinsdorf gone. Uh, I've seen enough. We've all seen enough. The signs were prevalent this past weekend. Uh, but of course, it might not happen. Uh, he's not going to just flat out sell the team. Uh, we're going to have to wait this out a little bit longer. Uh, but I don't think anything really, really, you know, magnificent is going to take place uh, until he is gone. Now, I can start dreaming about the next owner. And I want that next owner to surround themselves with individuals that, that challenge the status quo. Not just yes men or women, but smart baseball minds that do not want to simply please the boss, but create a dynamic culture of winning. And that entity should support it by the owner. Not discouraged. Paying premium money for premium talent will help as well. 
A lot of things need to happen with this White Sox team moving forward. You can only change things really one day at a time on the south side. They've got a six-game homestand. It starts Tuesday night. Giolito is on the hill for the Sox. The Royals send Brady Singer to the hill. We've seen him. The Sox are 7-9 and nine against the uh, 52 and 77 Royals this year. Giolito's last outing was against Baltimore. He went six and a third innings, four hits, one earned run in his last seven starts. Giolito has uh, only gone six innings or more twice. He has not had back to back quality starts all year long. The last time Lucas Giolito faced the Kansas City Royals was August 2nd of course, of this year. He went five innings, gave up only two earned runs, and got the win. Hopefully, White Sox offense can give him some support. Folks, thank you so much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast. Uh, we are on Twitter and Instagram, at Lockdown Sox. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Nick underscore a GGTB. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. Now make your second listen the Lockdown MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast Locked on MLB on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on the next episode, I will recap Giolito's outing and hopefully be celebrating a White Sox win. Appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski, and until next time, go Sox!